a girl from the future, a boy seeking to make the cute girls on the school council his personal harem. This and a whole lot more stuff coming right up. Hello everybody and welcome to the top 10 best-selling light novels in Japan. This covering the week of July 16th to the 22nd of 2018. I, of course, am Justice R. Stone and on this channel I always focus on light novels, whether they be bestseller lists like this one or reviews or news. So if you love light novels, you should subscribe. This week we've got six new titles on the list and uh, the book that's taken number one... Well, it's kind of number one with some fudging, but uh, we'll get to that, so let's just get right to the titles. At number 10 with 4,990 copies sold, volume number 14 of Death March Kara Hajimaru Isekai Kiyoso Kiyoku, or as we have it in English, Death March to the Parallel World Rhapsody. This one, of course, on the list last week, the story about a programmer who works himself to the point where he passes out at work, and when he awakens, he's in another world, finds that he's really low-leveled, but that he has this limited-use magic, and the first time he uses it, uh, yeah, pretty much makes him OP right off the bat. So, <laughs> basically, the story is about him traveling across this world and just finding adventures and meeting people, and yeah. It had an anime. It is licensed in English from Yen on. Uh, they are releasing do -do 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 Volume 6 in September. And, of course, the anime you could stream on Crunchyroll. At number 9, with 7,359 copies sold, Volume number 4 of Kamitachi ni Hiro Raita Otoko. Or it's known as The Man Picked Up by the Gods. We do not have this licensed in English. Take Bayashi Ryoma, a 39-year-old man with a hidden past, found himself in a strange white room. The gods tell them that he has died and that they are sending his soul to a different world, a world where magic exists. After living alone for three years, his gamer soul loses its common sense and starts along crazy roots. I I don't really know anything about this. Uh, if, you, if you're familiar with this title at all, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I mean, basically, it just sounds like it's an isekai. He gets reborn into another world. He doesn't really want to go out for a while. And then eventually, he's, I guess he's a gamer. <laughs> and eventually it just kind of overtakes him and he's like, let's just run crazy in this fantasy magic world. So that's what I get. I don't know if it's true. If you know, let me know in the comments down below. At number eight, with 9,031 copies sold, volume number 10 of Ero Manga Sensei. This one was on the list last week. Of course, we had the anime for this one last year. We do not have a license for the light novels, however, the manga adaptation has been licensed by Dark Horse Comics, and they're releasing the first volume in early October of this year. Uh, this one, of course, about the boy who's a light novel author, and he has this artist who does the work for his books, who... They're, they, they do really good stuff, let's put it that way. And then he surprisingly finds out that it's his shut-in little sister that is the artist. And hilarity ensues and other inappropriateness. At number 7, with 9,667 copies sold, Seito Kai no Shunen, Heikyo Gakuen Seito Kai. Moku Shiroku, number nine. Uh, this one, it's kind of interesting. So this, it's a collection of short stories uh, about the characters from Seito Kai no Ichizon. Now, this was, this one, I guess they're putting it out now. Uh, this is kind of a convoluted thing. So there was this original series, okay, uh, called Seito Kai no Ichizon. The story of that one was, 
The student council members of a certain high school are chosen by an extremely unique method. They are chosen based on their popularity with the other students of the school. This unique balloting system has resulted in a student council full of pretty girls, with the third year Sakuranu Kurimo as the student council president. However, one member of the student council did not get in based on popular vote, but by taking advantage of a loophole which specifies that the student who tops the school in the year-end examinations may choose to join the student council. That student is Sugisake Ken, a guy obsessed with Eroge whose goal is to make the student council into his own personal harem. Now this series is complete with 10 volumes, and there were previously 8 short story collections. This is the ninth, but it's been since 2013 that there hasn't been anything. Uh, however, I guess this volume coincides with the 10th anniversary of the original light novel series, so I guess that's kind of why this is a volume 9, even though it seems kind of weird to call it volume 9 when it's been 5 years since the last one, but... Uh, well, that's just kind of how it is. At number six, with 10,194 copies sold, volume number 14 of Kono Subarashi Sakai ni Shukufukuo. This one, of course, Kono Suba, God's blessing on this wonderful world. On the list for the last couple of weeks, uh, this one, of course, we do have licensed in English by Yen On. Uh, we also have the manga licensed by Yen Press. And we've got an anime, uh, a couple of seasons of anime that covered volumes 1 to 4 that you can stream on Crunchyroll. Uh, the volume number 6 of the light novel series is going to be releasing in August of 2018. Uh, this one, of course, uh, about a boy that from our world who dies, is given the opportunity to be reincarnated into another world. But he's given the chance to take any one thing he wants with him, and he chooses the goddess who he's talking to. Unfortunately, she kind of turns out to be a bit of a problem. Uh, just as pretty much all the characters in this story are, they've all got quirks, let's say. But not in the My Hero Academia kind of way. <laughs> um, this one, of course, pure comedy, lots of fun. Um, it's a really good series. I, I've been reading all of these ones. I've still got to get to number five, I guess, before number six comes out. But uh, but yeah, this one, really good comedy series and one that's very, very self-aware of all the sort of tropes and everything else of the fantasy isekai genre and just plays them all up for laughs. At number five, with 14,331 copies sold, Volume number 12 of Roku Denashi Majutsu Koshi to Akashic Records, or as we know it in English, Akashic Records of the Bastard Magical Instructor. Uh, we do not have an English license for the light novels. The manga is licensed for English by Seven Seas, and there was a 12-episode anime that was licensed in North America by Funimation. Uh, Sisti attends a magical academy to hone her skills in the magical arts and hopes to solve the mystery of the enigmatic Sky Castle. After the retirement of her favorite teacher, the replacement, Glenn, turns out to be a tardy, lazy, seemingly incompetent bastard of an instructor. How was it that Glenn was hand-picked by the best magician in the Academy? I don't know much about this series because I didn't watch the anime because it's kind of my personal policy not to watch any anime based on light novels in the hope that we may perhaps get it licensed. Although it's been a while now, so I'm kind of thinking... This is a long shot to get licensed, which is too bad because, uh, well, I mean, we've got a couple of magical high school type titles, but, uh, I wouldn't mind having a couple more. At number four, with 14,480 copies sold, volume number one of Shin High School DXD. Now, this is kind of weird. I, I haven't found a lot of information about Shin High School DxD. It is a sequel 
to High School DxD, which ended with volume number 25. But it's like a direct continuation. It Basically, when I'm reading online, it seems to me that the author is basically restarting it at a number one because his publisher was bugging him to do a sequel series to bring out like a new series. I I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> I'm familiar with High School DxD from the anime, which of course we do uh, have in North America. In fact, there was just a recent new series, uh, High School DxD Hero, which began airing in April and you could stream it on Crunchyroll. Uh, we also have the manga being released by Yen Press, but no one's ever licensed the light novels. Uh, someone has also suggested online, and I don't know if this is legitimate or not, but um, there was also the suggestion that he's restarting it because he's starting to get into, um, how shall I put it nicely, into a more mature relationship between Issei and his harem of beauties. Uh, and so he's kind of having that series be restarted so that they can change the rating recommendation on it if you catch my drift. Now, High School DxD has always been known for its bit of raciness and liberal uh, use of opi, but it sounds like maybe people are theorizing that this one's going to get just a little bit hotter under the collar. I don't know if that's true, uh, it could be just rumors or fervent fan hope. I don't know. Uh, if you're not familiar with this series, basically it's the story about a high school boy who's, well, a total pervert, basically, and in love with breasts. And uh, he finally finds a girl who wants to go out with him, and then she turns out to be an angel, and she kills him. And he's resurrected by one of his classmates, his senpai, and she turns out to be a devil and has resurrected him to serve as one of her demons. So <laughs> the sword, the series is it, it's pretty wild actually. It involves just about every kind of supernatural entity that you can imagine. Uh, as I said, it went for 25 volumes in the original series, and now. This is sort of restarting uh, again. I, it's it's very weird to me. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Um, well, okay, it, it makes sense, but it there's not a lot of really confirmed information about what exactly the reasoning is behind restarting the series as Shin High School DxD. So if you've got some insight on that, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. At number three, with 15,240 copies sold, Kishibe Rohan wa Tawai Murenai. Uh, this one is actually just a connection, a, a continuation of the Kishibe Rohan short story collections that were on the list for weeks and left the top ten for maybe all of a week or two, and now we've got the next one. Uh, this one, it... Uh, is Kishibe Rohan doesn't flirt, is what it kind of uh, translates to. Of course, this is a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure spin-off. Uh, there's been a number of volumes about this particular character, uh, short story collections. This is not even the only light novel sort of component of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure that kind of spun off from the manga. Uh, the manga itself has over 120 volumes in Japan. We are getting it in English from Viz, and the latest episodes of the anime you can catch on Crunchyroll. At number two, with 19,476 copies sold, volume number 10 of Imoto Sae Ireba Li, or as we have it in English, a Sister's All You Need. Uh, this one is licensed for English release by Yen On. They're going to be releasing volume number two in mid-September of 2018. There was a 12-episode anime which was streaming on Crunchyroll, I believe a season or two ago, and it covered about volumes one to three, but it did have some components of volume number four. Uh, the reason that it can work that way is that this series, it follows a group of friends that are all kind of connected by 
the fact that they're light novelists, and except for the one who is the little sister of the main character, and then the other one is a high school, uh, college friend of the main character. Uh, <laughs> basically, it just follows their hijinks and craziness. Uh, in the first volume, which I read and reviewed, it covered everything from him doing his taxes to taking trips to the southern parts of Japan because it was too cold in the northern parts of Japan, then taking trips to the northern part of Japan to get sushi. Like, it's very much of like a slice of life type series, and each chapter is kind of a self-contained story. Uh, definitely some ups and downs in terms of the story itself, but I was surprised by how engaging I found certain parts of it. Uh, it's definitely not going to be for everybody, that's for sure, but uh, there were some definite glimmers of cool sort of character uh, moments and interesting introspection, particularly from like a, a creative writer's type of point of view. So I actually was surprised how much I enjoyed the first volume, especially given how it starts, but it's such a troll the way that it starts. It thankfully does not continue that way for the entirety of the book. Uh, but anyway, this one, yeah, it's, it's again, it's, it's a very slice of life. It's not necessarily that there's some big, huge plot to it. It's more just following these characters through the crazy and weird things that they do to find inspiration and to work and everything else. Finally, at number one, with 23,092 copies sold, it is Mirai no Mirai. Now, this one's been on the countdown for weeks. Uh, at Anime Expo, Yen On announced that they have licensed this novel, and obviously for pretty good reason. Now, this is kind of a fudge, because technically there were two different volumes of Mirai Mirai on the countdown, but I combined them to give this total, because really the text is the exact same, it's just how they're being marketed and the covers and stuff, so there's really no difference, it's just, yeah. So I just kind of combined them both, because seemed silly to separate them. Uh, the film was just released, actually, uh, on the 20th of July in Japan, and it's kind of interesting because even though the light novel seems to be doing really, really well, uh, the movie opened at number two at the box office at a significantly lower ticket sales than what were anticipated. Now, I haven't seen anything that suggests that that's because of the quality of the film or because of the story or anything else. Uh, I'm just not, I'm not too sure exactly. Like I've seen a couple of articles that have theorized different things about it, but, uh, but I don't know if there's any really a definitive answer as to why that is. Uh, if you've seen some of information regarding that, that you think is interesting, feel free to comment in the comments down below. But uh, nonetheless, regardless of the movie's performance, the light novel seems to be doing very well. And even, you know, with a couple days after its release, still having very, very strong sales for this uh, week. Because this covered till the 22nd, so still covered a couple days after the film's release. So it'll be interesting to see what happens on next week's list, because then by then the movie will have been out for several days and the box office returns and the reviews and everything else will have hit so it'll be interesting to see how much of a drop we see in the light novel sales on next week's list this week i want to say a special thanks to patrick mbaihi david miller fixlab.com lights leo and mokina for their support on patreon as well as a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters for helping to keep this channel going and for helping to fund the Light Novel Podcast, which of course gets posted on this channel as well. So those are your top 10 best-selling light novels in Japan for the week of July 16th to the 22nd of 2018. Again, you know, another week where we've had more than half the list sort of upheavaled. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens next week. Like I said, uh, Mirai no Mirai has been out in the theaters at that point for a couple of days, so it'll be interesting to see whether we see a big drop in terms of the sales of the light novel. So I hope you'll join me then, and uh, we'll find out together.
If you're brand new to the channel and you love light novels, you should subscribe. I do this countdown every single week, as well as doing weekly reviews of light novels as well, and news, and posting the light novel podcast to this channel too. Thank you for joining me in this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye bye for now.